Hey guys, Mike Linares here, and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we start today's video, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. All right guys, let's begin. So as you guys know, the heart muscle is very stiff and hard like a rock, or hard like a brick wall. This doesn't allow for the ventricles to stretch, which if they don't stretch, they can't get blood in. And if they can't get blood in, then this means they can't refill with restrictive cardiomyopathy since the ventricles can't stretch. Now this is caused by either genetics or scar tissue buildup in the heart muscle itself. But guys, we'll review the causes in a moment. The main point here is that again, we have less blood into the heart which means less blood out to the body. And this less blood out means less cardiac output, meaning less oxygen out to the body. So just like in dilated cardiomyopathy, your heart is not an effective pump anymore. And even though the patho is a little bit different here, our signs and symptoms are quite similar, all revolving around heart failure due to this pump failure, or in this case, from a stiff heart. So in heart failure, we know that fluid backs up into the body or into the lungs, right? And this low cardiac output means low oxygen to the body. So guys, we're gonna see all the signs and symptoms stem from this low oxygen and blood being backed up. So signs and symptoms of low oxygen again, in the brain we're gonna see syncope, but always our first sign is gonna be restlessness and agitation, that change in mental status. In the heart we'll see angina and ECG dysrhythmias, and even shortness of breath, also called dyspnea, and fatigue called weakness. Now, as you guys know, heart failure signs and symptoms. Left side of heart failure is left for lungs, so we'll get wet lungs like crackles and pulmonary edema, and right side of heart failure is right for rock the body, so we'll get a swollen body filled with edema, ascites, and JVD, that jugular vein distension. Now, as far as the causes of restrictive cardiomyopathy, it all revolves around the two Ds, darn genetics and damage to the heart. For genetics, the heart gets hard like a rock from particles that deposit into the heart muscle itself. Kind of like bulletproof glass, these deposits of particles make the heart rock hard. So when proteins are deposited into the myocardium, the heart muscle, it's called amyloidosis granulomas. Where the heck do they get these names from? It sounds like Mary Poppins. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious amyloidosis granulomas. Or when small areas of inflamed tissue are deposited, it's called sarcoidosis. And lastly, if iron particles are deposited, making a person be like Iron Man, it's called hemochromatosis. And our last D is from damage, usually caused from radiation, where we have a lot of radiation to the heart, kind of like in chemotherapy patients or other patients with a lot of CT scans or chest x-rays. Your heart will actually get a lot of scar tissue around it and really get hard. So we do the same test as we always do, but here's the weird thing, guys everything is usually normal. So our chest x-ray, it's gonna show a normal heart size because everything's just kind of stuck and really hard. But maybe sometimes there's pulmonary congestion from the heart failure. Now, the biggest difference is the heart is not enlarged like in dilated cardiomyopathy. The heart's just stiff here, guys. We'll also have a normal echo, normal ejection fraction, meaning the heart is pumping out enough blood over 55% ejection fraction. And lastly, our MRIs can rule out pericarditis. All right, guys, now that we know what's wrong with the patient, what are we gonna do about it? Well, again, just like in dilated cardiomyopathy, we need to increase that cardiac output, basically meaning increase oxygen to the body. But honestly, there's not much we can do here with our rock hard heart. So if possible, we can treat the causes, and usually the only cause to treat is by decreasing radiation exposure. But usually, since it's always genetic, we usually have to do a heart swap, aka a heart transplant. Now, last but not least, the most deadly cardiomyopathy of them all. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.